Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. We're here with Colleen this morning and uh, one week away from Halloween, coming up with some cool ideas. So we've moved out from the Thanksgiving themes and uh, this is sometimes when people just go full bore Halloween, right? They kind of wait for that week before and just go crazy. It's time for some fun. Yeah, so <laughs> you're going to give us, I love how we switch like right from Halloween into Christmas. So right now we got to get dark and fun and crazy. Well, so last, your last chance to have like live plants and have some fun oh. with it and people are coming up to your door for Halloween so mm -hmm. you know you gotta have something for, the, it's for them to look at. That's so. right. Okay so we have these beautiful flowers everything just looks so innocent and then what are it you gonna does. do to this thing? <laughs> We're gonna make it into a witch. Okay. So you know the summer's over so you really don't need your pool noodle anymore no. so we'll take a pool noodle and I just cut it in half and a couple our trusty bamboo skewers here. This can be dowel, it can be like any kind of stick. Mm -hmm. we'll just stick those in there. We'll put the pool noodles on top here. And you can use any planter that you have, like if you already have an existing planter. Sure. You know, this can be adapted into that. This one I've kind of made um, on purpose. <laughs> kind of maybe look like a skirt, perhaps. Uh-huh. Oh, I see. That's cute. So you got the little edges there and it's okay mm -hmm. if the, the bottom stick up there. Okay. Then you want to choose your favorite witchy looking socks or tights like you can have some fun and have like some really funky socks. We have some crazy socks in the store right now. I was looking at they're all awesome, those. Eh? Oh yeah. <laughs> so like they're all themed. There's all kinds any of boys season. and girls. Yeah. yeah. Any season. Or you can just use black tights mm -hmm. or you know I like the striped look so <laughs> yes these are my son's pajama bottoms. <laughs> That's hilarious. He won't be wearing them for a few days. But. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> and then you just basically dress your pool noodle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can, you can have so much fun with this, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you, know, you can get like fun, like go shopping and like find some, you know, Value Village or wherever and just yeah. get some fun tights or socks or whatever. Right. Or, um, you know, even like like a bright orange or green crinoline or something. Like yep. it's underneath her, it's this, her skirt flipped up, right? Any so of that essentially mesh. she's uh, upside down right now. She's yeah. head down. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Basically you've had a witch crash land in your patio. Yeah. So you get the legs dressed on there and hide oh, the bottom. Pull it down, and if you do have them, if it's really loose, you could just take some pins sure, and, tighten and tighten it, it up. up if you like to, or you yeah. can stuff it if you want to have you know thicker yeah. legs, puffy legs. <laughs> and then you need a pair of boots, yeah. and then those just kind of go on the ends. So as again, well. that Valley Village is always good for that stuff oh, too. For to sure, go pick up for a sure. Pair of... And then these ones happen to have um, buckles on them already. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna stay. Is your leg gonna stay? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so do you have to remember that? Once you put the boots on, they're a little heavy too. Yeah. So. Yeah. If they don't have buckles, you can just use like some tin foil yeah, and some cardboard good. and. Just stand. <laughs> yeah. I'll hold it. It's one of those things you got to play around with. Yeah, and then you put the like put them like right in there. I didn't put them in very deep. Sure. Yeah. So the farther you put them in, then that's going to give them some support. Okay. Right. And then you know, so you can now you can see where this is kind of like your base of your skirt, mm -hmm. and then you have this is kind of like the crinoline underneath, and then you've got her legs sticking out. Very cute. I like this. <laughs> so you can do this with like I've planted this one kind of to look like a skirt. You can mm -hmm. just use like a plain mum. You can use ornamental mm -hmm. grasses. Mm -hmm. You can use pretty much anything in a pot to do this. You could have it sticking out of your garden too if sure. you wanted to. Yeah, I was gonna say just get right in there, right? You still have all the you know your remnants from your garden. So exactly. Just go for it. Like she's crushing. <laughs> That's really cute. Okay, so now you actually also have some other parts over there that uh, you can add to. Uh, to make her yeah definitely like you can have this you can put her you know you can put the crash landed witch anywhere but I've yeah. also got a broom here that you can have sticking out mm -hmm. or just and that can be like any corn broom that you have in the mm -hmm. house like mm -hmm. the older the better even to make it look kind of rustic mm -hmm. you could take hockey tape and you know make the handle right. black if you want to right so you know also I guess anything really you can grab uh, I don't know we had some witches hats kicking around here yeah put a witch's hat off to the side or something right? for sure just totally play it up Halloween's a time to have fun mm -hmm. and like I said it's like your last time to be able to have things outside other than Christmas yeah so you know be whimsical and mm -hmm. you know, have and, your crash land. and you're right though you know you're kind of hanging on to sort of the last bit of the greenery I and mean, obviously we pull in our greens uh, for Christmas time and, and that's about it but this is like the real flowers that are growing exactly the are still kind of okay yeah uh, so you know it is uh, it is ideal to I love the boot idea though. <laughs> but yeah as you say socks skirt you can even add like yep. your own little 
skirt in there. Any of the mesh, again, you can do like a little skirt around the bottom of the planter mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. actually have a skirt. Mm -hmm. um, you could just have total fun with it. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of just making sure we get this kind of shoved down inside and, uh, and, and then you know you've got it balanced out. Obviously, yeah, exactly. this is a nice big pot, but you could, you could do, you kind of just have to think. I know we have like in the store, you guys come up with all kinds of really cool ideas of what people can do. Obviously, mm -hmm. we did the pumpkin stacking thing, yep. you know, uh, last week, but you know, take all your, take all those pumpkins and spray them black and white or yeah, exactly. green or whatever. Put you some need. reflective or glow in the dark paint. You know, you can have mm -hmm. some fun with that too mm -hmm. and then have it so that you can see it at night or reflective mm -hmm. so that when the cars drive up or when your kids drive up with, or walk up with their flashlights, yeah. then you can see it as oh, well. that's cool. So. What are you doing at your house this year? Well, there'll be pumpkins involved. There might be a few ghosts hanging around and probably some legs in my planters. Honestly, so. how much time do you spend on your, uh, your garden? This time of year, like, yeah, when it's the last kick when in the we're can, doing like so. when we're doing decorating Halloween, and you're getting lots of pumpkins, lots of lots pumpkins. of carving, the lots carving? of carving, yes, carving of the pumpkins. So and that's the neat part about uh, about that as well is we have a lot of little bits and pieces that you can add to pumpkins to make them look spooky or whatever you need to do, like little things that you can add yep. to the pots as well, and little pumpkin. Trinkets there's and... duck feet that you can put underneath the pumpkin so you can make it look like a duck. Oh, really? And yep, there's another one so you can make your pumpkin look like a spider. Yeah, I've seen the spider and... one. Those one, the spider wire ones, you can yes. put your pumpkin in there yep. and it's done. Easy peasy done. You don't even need to cut. I know a lot of people, what happens is they get kind of near the end and uh, it's getting close to Halloween and they don't get a chance to carve their pumpkins. So you buy one of those spider wire things, yep. stick the pumpkin in, no carving done, and unfortunately, there's not going to be carved pumpkins that night, but time. Is not permitted. Oh, I know. Time. We're always so busy, right? <laughs> so it's always good to have like those quick and easy yeah. things, and especially like painting the pumpkins. I've seen like minion pumpkins and you know spider pumpkins. That's what I'm trying like, to attempt this year is minion pumpkins. I, I bought I a whole bunch that. last year and I never got around to it, but I'm going to try it this year. So you kind of look up ideas, look on Pinterest. Yep. Come into Terra, watch what you guys do, and you're good to go. Exactly. All right. Again, these guys always will give you guys ideas if you kind of come into the store, bring a pot, you'll create things, and obviously after uh, Halloween. One week from now, we're going to be thinking Christmas. Yep, so we'll everything will Christmas. switch over from all the fun <laughs> to Christmas and spirit. So thank you. Thanks. Good stuff, Colleen. That's it for now. We have more Terror to come. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. Heritage Perennials. Look for us in the blue pots. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. Little change of pace, change of place here. I'm here with a gentleman by the name of William Kingsley, and we are at Westfield Heritage Village. Hopefully many of you have had the opportunity to come here either on your own or with your family, but uh, there's this very special gathering. And you know all about this gathering. Absolutely. It's an incredible gathering coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, in just a short while, I'm part of the planning committee. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. And it is a witches' convention. It is, and warlocks. It is uh, our second annual one. And mm -hmm. it is an opportunity for people to come together and uh, expand the arts and uh, have a wonderful time. And be slightly scared. <laughs> uh, slightly scared, but we're really more orientated towards the, the more family. And that. So there is right. a little something for everybody. Sure. Um, 
kinds of exciting things. One of the centerpieces mm -hmm. that we'll be having is one of our most prominent citizens, uh, Mortimer Count Mortimer Crane, okay. is celebrating his 511th birthday. Wow, he's pretty old. So he, who is this fellow? Well, he has been a center part of our community. Okay. Uh, one of the leading warlocks uh, has made some great breakthroughs, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, in uh, hex, uh, hexes and curses, mm, wow. and that, which we will be having some workshops in regards to that I, as well. So I understand that people are going to learn some of the potions and Well, yes, yes, you can learn things. about potions and um, how to uh, better improve your spell casting. And so there are some very exciting things that will be uh, wow. going on. But the centerpiece, of course, is the birthday where there will be sure. a huge celebration and cake. I mean, what's a celebration without cake? Interesting. So now this is happening on October 30th and October 31st. So it's obviously right around Halloween. You don't normally associate a birthday with Halloween, but obviously birthdays happen on Halloween they too. Do. And they it happens do. to be Mortimer Crane's birthday. Yes. So he is a warlock, which I would normally associate with being kind of slightly evil, but ah. he's okay. One of those public <laughs> perceptions, but we're all actually quite very friendly people here. Okay. And we're encouraging <laughs> delegates to come and mm -hmm come in your, your favorite witch or warlock costume. Oh, like pull out the good stuff. The good stuff, because there will be a uh, fashion show. Right. And that for best dress witch or warlock, which I, sure. I'm hoping to take myself. Well, yeah, I don't know if that would be right, but. Well, <laughs> I suppose uh, conflict of interest. <laughs> Possibly. So, so all those witches and warlocks out there, we're talking picking out your best outfit in your closet. Absolutely. Looking, and that, you know, smashing socks, and divine. All yes. Those things, yeah. Oh yes. From from the wee witches and warlocks right to the, the, the grandpa and yeah. grandma yeah. warlocks. The, you know, <laughs> the centurions. Right. And that's the, so that that would be very really good mm -hmm. and. Um, and of course, uh, this is going to be the place because what is a convention without mm -hmm. an opportunity to look at purchasing something to take home to mm -hmm. further your art and craft? And mm -hmm. we have one of the premier wand makers. So I understand. And you have yes, one of these wands I right do. here. I do. This look is that. one of his wands and that expertly turned. And we have them in all kinds of different styles. Oh, cool. And uh, you may want to come uh, for just a little witching around because mm -hmm. we also have our milliner, our hat maker, mm -hmm. who will be uh, producing wonderful new high fashion hats oh, uh, and neat. little fascinators. Oh, how fun and is that? That's, that's the part. I mean, we're in a village here right now. We so are. there are all different uh, people in here creating mm -hmm. wonderful little crafts and ideas. Yes, and we also have uh, our broom maker. We'll be oh, doing right. that, and so there will be lots of broom parking, <laughs> and uh, we will, uh, of course, the broom maker will be here demonstrating okay. his craft as, as well. And of course, this is happening in the evenings of oh. both the October 30th and the 31st, 6.30 to 9.30, so mm. it's at night, so there will be jack-o'-lanterns everywhere oh, lit. Yes, and, that, and there will be a large display of carved jack-o'-lanterns mm -hmm. at the very front of the village, and it's always exciting to see the creativity mm -hmm of the young people mm -hmm. and for young people there will be of course opportunities to uh, practice a little bit of witchcrafting and mm -hmm. that at our our, our school and that's mm -hmm. just to get them excited about it oh it'll be so much fun and of course what would a convention be without something gastronomic like what that? oh well I can't say they haven't. They're still working on the menus. Oh, it's, oh, I see. But there will be an absolutely delicious board of very scary things. Really? Uh, to taste. And uh, it'll be... You have to have treats. You do have to treats. There yes. are treats. We do have a full line of treats. So your standard stick candies, of mm, course. And then wand candy, as we like to call it around right, here. Right, of course. And uh, <laughs> so it's... Uh, there will be something to eat and mm -hmm. so there's something for all the the senses uh, and, and all of these wonderful buildings they'll be open people will be able yes, to go and see yeah, and we'll walk around the, yeah and now i understand there's going to be tours into the forest as well oh yes and that uh it's the forest spooky. is it's a little spooky but it is not as far as i know overly scary okay and uh, so it's a, just a little on the spooky side yeah. because we really are aiming towards the, the larger That's family. right. So we're talking yeah. about friendly witches and warlocks and learning a little bit more about their I mean, history and know, their lore. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So there will be, I think, uh, a little something 
out mm -hmm. there for everyone. The village is very magical at night. Oh, I can imagine. And, this is uh, going to look pretty great through here. It's it so will. beautiful through here right now while we're here in the daytime, yes. but well, I can just imagine in the evening. We don't have a, a lot of that new thing in electricity. And right. that. So a lot of our buildings are still lit by candles and How coal cool. oil lamps and fires in the fireplaces. So much fun. So it smells and yeah. tastes. I can and just imagine. Now, now, this building we're in right now, this dates back to when? 1852. Oh my goodness. And that was, uh, was in Brantford mm -hmm. and uh, so we're happy to have it here. It's owned by the Gillen family. Now this is the best part about Westfield Heritage Village is that you can come at other times and oh, yes. uh, you're able to experience. These are beautiful heritage homes that have been saved and have. have been taken care of and brought here to create this beautiful little village. Yes. So we learn a little bit more about our history here. About our history. We cover a, a whole range of uh, time from mm -hmm. the early uh, 1800s right through to the early 1900s. Yeah. So there's a little something and I think that it, it catches it all in uh, this event as mm -hmm. you kind of travel because being a warlock we're not necessarily We've been around a long time. I was going to say, time. you're kind of just ageless, aren't you? I mean, you uh, have age, but you just keep on living. Yes, I, <laughs> I, I could tell you how old I am, but... Um, well, I'll I'm just, sure you look good for your age. I, I do. <laughs> I do. I have a potion for that. Oh, that OC, oh, see, that's yeah. why. If you, if you come to this event, obviously, you can learn mm -hmm. about some of these wonderful potions. Love potion, you were saying. Love potions, and uh, again, there will be a seminar mm -hmm. on hexes and curses. Wow, and, lots to learn. Uh, Lots to learn, lots to see. So all the witches and warlocks are welcome to this event. Absolutely. Westfieldheritage.ca for more people, for more information. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that way you can find out. Uh, tickets for seniors, children, adults, everybody is, are welcome. But again, full dress that night. Oh, uh, yes. You want to be You want to win looking. that prize. You do. You want to win that prize. And again, it's going to be dark here, but it's going to be wonderful. And you're going to be with Absolutely. your family, your friends and a wonderful celebration mm -hmm. for a really great time of year where we get to hang out with all of you guys. So. Well, it is always an exciting time here at the village. <laughs> well, I look forward oh, to yes. the event. This is going to be great. Good. So will you get ready with all your tricks and your treats well, and I uh, will be seeing you then. We're so happy you came out to Oh, thank us. you, William Kingsley. Right. That's you. it for now from Westfield. We'll be back with more Tear at Home after this. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. I am a truth seeker. A storyteller. A dedicated volunteer. I am a caring neighbor. A customer's best friend. And a client advocate. I am a survivor. A social media junkie. A proud father of four and problem solver. I am the Hamilton Spectator. 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 We are the Hamilton Spectator. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're here with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra Restaurant in Hamilton. We're working with mussels today. We're doing mussels, yes. Okay. Something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mussels are in season right now. Okay. They're, they're really flavorful, really nice and fresh. They start getting larger as, you know, closer we get to December and stuff like that. They start getting bigger as well. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know what season was for, in season was for mussels. So there you go. Yeah, Good so they're, they're coming in. Okay. And, uh, you know, there's arabiata al olio, the pesto mussels. We do a sambuca one at the restaurant. So mm -hmm. this is another way of, of introducing mussels to the family uh, or your friends with mm -hmm. a little bit of a twist on it. And what okay. I've done here is I'm trying, we're going to introduce kale. 
Okay. So this is uh, Tuscan black kale. I was going to say, okay. that's different looking kale. Yeah, this is the Tuscan black kale. So mm -hmm. there's a couple different kinds, several different kinds of kale. Yes. This one, what I like about this, it's a little bit harder to find, but when you do, you'll find that it, it's still got all those health properties and the health benefits. However, it's not as rough and it's not oh, as um, chewy. As kale the other can be kale. really. Ugh. It can be pretty, pretty <laughs> chewy. There. Challenging for some people. Right? Exactly. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little bit of. It's got a tomato base, and we're gonna be using tomato paste to make that. Mm -hmm. But it also has some potatoes in it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, a potato, and this is just a new white potato, and I'm gonna give it a real quick dice, and we're gonna get it into the pan with some tomato paste. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't expect to see uh, potatoes in with mussels, so. It's fun. So I throw that in, and right now it's dry, and there's a reason for that. I do want to add the tomato paste and get it to start caramelizing on the bottom. Okay. So I put that in there and start to let it uh, let it start browning up. We'll add a little bit more potato to that. There we go. So nice this time of year when the potatoes are so new and fresh. Fresh, and, mm. new, light. And then we're gonna take our kale. I'm just going to give it a rough chop. There we go. We have some shallots, and they're going to go in as well. Touch of salt, and you don't want too much salt because you got the tomato paste, which has a little bit of salt in right. it. You have mussels, which obviously are salty. Mm -hmm. A little bit of pepper. I'm going to take a touch of oil. And then we're just gonna let that caramelize. And what you're looking for is you want that to start browning up like that on the okay. bottom, okay? And you're gonna coat all those potatoes with it. There we go. I have some dry oregano. And the only reason I'm using dry here, this was actually fresh oregano that what we do is we take it, we hang it in the bunch, we dry it, and then mm. we just roll it. So it, it is fresh, but by mm -hmm. having it dry, it'll just mix in better yes. than having the fresh stuff, which okay. will kind of clump together. And now we're going to hit a little bit of white wine and deglaze. And I'm going to take a little bit of vegetable stock and add that in as well. Mm, and I'm going to let this great. stew for a couple minutes. Okay. And while that's stewing, I'm gonna take my mussels. Now, we've already cleaned them, and what you're looking for is you gotta de-beard them. So if there's any seaweed or anything on there, you wanna mm -hmm. de-beard that, give them a quick scrub. Okay, rinse them out with some cold water, and make sure that they're all fresh. So the way to tell if mussels are fresh, if they're closed, you know they're fresh. If they're slightly open, which I don't think there are, give them a little tap on the table. Okay. If they don't close, you wanna discard those. Okay. okay, so here's one that's just yep, slightly open one. here. We're gonna give them a tap. He's not closing, so that one you don't want He's to out. use. Okay. okay. So even just a little opening like just that. Just a little yeah. opening, yeah. You don't want it. Okay. That means that they're not alive. They've they've died, and you don't uh, want to eat mussels that are like that. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We're gonna get all that tomato paste that's at the bottom off. Mm -hmm. Did you always have mussels on your menu at the restaurant? Yes. Yes. I yes. figured as much because you can do so much with them, right? As you say, this like the the ideas for for sauces with them. It's just, it's just wide open. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you know what? One of the dishes that we do from time to time is we'll cook the mussels and then take them out, take them out of the shell and make a mussel sauce. Mm. So it's just the sauce. It's got that seafood Ooh. flavor to it. It's really, Save really nice. Save everyone the work of scooping them out. <laughs> Save everyone the work of scooping it out and then you can put it on top of a, a bunch of different dishes. So it, it's That's an excellent, awesome. excellent Great. dish. I'm going to add a touch of garlic to this. Okay. Mm, that sauce smells great. It's good. It's a good combo. It is very nice. And like I said, you need a few minutes for those potatoes to cook. So okay. we're gonna let that cook for a couple minutes. Okay. And then once, just before I put in the mussels, I'm gonna put in my kale. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the kale from the bottom first, because this is the thicker stuff, okay? So nice. we're gonna keep the leaves, the top portion for the end. Okay. You don't wanna overcook that. Sure. But at the same time, this is gonna take an extra minute or two just to uh, get it softened up. Now, you know, you were saying that this one would be a little bit harder to find. Is I mean, I know we're starting to see more variations in kale in the yep. average grocery store, but is there some a store that would maybe carry more variety or than others, or is uh, it just kind of you kind of lucking out whatever the producer's bringing in? You're, you're kind of lucking out depending on who the uh, the produce manager is and what they're sure, bringing in. I see. Um, okay. It is Tuscan kale, so yeah. one of the European. 
<laughs> I was going to say, that's what I'm wondering, right? One but of the European ones, you probably find it a little bit more readily available. That one, yeah, that looks good. Um, but like I said, it is nice because it's a little bit softer leaf. It's yeah. not, it, it's just not as hardy as the other mm -hmm. one. And you don't want that because, you know, mussels are not, they're fairly delicate. Sure. And so I guess if you were using the, uh, you know, one of the more hardier kales, you want to make sure you get that, uh, that you want to get that spine. Yeah, you definitely spine, want right? that spine out of there. Like yeah. with this one here, once you cook it down, it's going to be fine. nice and soft. But yeah, okay. that other one, you definitely want to trim those leaves. It's not a it's nice just, yeah. treat in your muscles. Exactly. <laughs> and that looks good. Okay, now we're going to check those potatoes. And they're starting to soften up. So now, once mussels they cook quickly as well, don't they? Yeah, they're about, uh, they're about a five minute cook, mm -hmm. um, depending on how many you're making and what kind of pot. Now this is a real wide bottom pot, sure. okay. so I mean they're going to cook fairly quickly. If this was a deeper, smaller pot, if we tried to do them in there, it might take a little bit longer and you'd oh, have right, to mix them Oh right, because they're around. deeper this way versus spread out. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. All right, so we'll let that continue to cook yeah. and uh, we'll kind of do some more prep as we uh, head sure. into break here and uh, then we'll come back and throw it all together and show you another option for uh, mussels. And of course you can always just go to the restaurant and let Mark do it for you, which is nice. <laughs> That's always good. Mark, you and your team, right? That's all right, we'll right. be back with more right after this. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back with uh, Chef Mark and we have our mussels. Are they all ready? They are. I, awesome. So I put them in a few minutes ago. Oh, looks good. And then at the same time as that, I put in the uh, tops of the kale. Right. Okay. The softer part. Yes. And it, if you find that you're a little bit low on liquid or anything like that, you, I add a little bit more olive oil and a little bit more of the vegetable stock. Okay. Now keep in mind that we make our vegetable stock so there's no salt in that. So if you're using a store-bought, there's going to be salt. So you've got to be very, very careful what you do there. Mm -hmm. One thing that, is, that can really bother people and, and turn you right off your meal is having too high levels of sodium. It, you just can't eat it. It's too strong. Right? It's just too strong. This looks great. I like this. It's very colorful. It's healthy. Very healthy. Extremely healthy. Mm, so good. So light. And, and everybody, people who like mussels, they all have their favorite variations. So it's always nice to try something new. Yeah. And like I said, you know, you're adding the kale, so you are getting those nice greens in there. You got the potatoes. So it ends up being a full meal when it's all said and done. It does. That's great. Some people just want to sit down with a big crusty oh, piece of yeah. bread and that all by themselves. Nobody, nobody allowed home. That's right. <laughs> You can find this recipe on our website, by the way, at terragreenhouses.com. So it uh, gives you an opportunity to try something new. So this is actually tasty. There you go. So again, you're saying mussels are in season right up through until it's about December? No, they're in, they get really into full season in, in December. Okay. Uh, you're good all the way up till about April, beginning of May. Wow, okay, mm -hmm. so that's when they're really getting into their, their height, so more that's of the winter right. months. More of the winter months, and that's when you want to pull out that big crusty bread and go Exactly, because so. you don't want that baguette in the middle of uh, summer when that's you're right. supposed to be putting on a bathing suit. <laughs> We're just getting out of that. All right, very good. Thank you so much, Mark. That's Thank a good you. idea, and always great ideas to try for fall. We'll be back with more next week, and I hope you have a good one. That's it for now. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives.